my problem says find the stationary points and inflection points of the function g of x which is equal to x plus cos of x. Okay well stationary points are places where the first derivative is zero and inflection points are places where the second derivative switches between positive and negative so I'm going to need to find the first derivative and the second derivative. So g of x is x plus cos of x g dashed of x so that's one, the derivative there, because it's the number next to the x, which is secretly a one. And the derivative of cos of x uh, is, let me see, I know it's sine of x, but is it plus or minus? Cos uh, looks like this, and it starts out having negative slope. Okay, so it's gonna be minus sine of x. That's really interesting. Sine of x is between one and minus one. Um, so if you subtract it off of one, it's never going to be negative. It would be zero sometimes whenever sine of x was equal to one. And I'll come back to that later, but it looks like it's always increasing. Uh, I'll check that out in a minute. Um, g double dashed of x is, uh, the one will become a zero, the minus will still be there, and the derivative of sine all right, sine starts out with a positive derivative, so it'll be just straight up cos of x, not minus cos of x. Okay, so to find the stationary points, then I would need to find when the first derivative is zero, which would be one minus sine of x equals zero, which would be that sine of x was equal to one, which I noticed earlier. Uh, and then sine of x equals one. Um, if I use x and y coordinates, not this x, just the ones on, on the unit circle, then sine of x is one exactly at that spot, which is pi on two. But any two pi away from there, one way or the other, would produce the same answer. So that would be plus two pi times k where k is an integer. Okay, cool. That's really interesting. Sine of x is one at these positions on the sine graph. So that's every here. So it has its uh, stationary points at the same places, uh, not there, here and here, at the same places that sine is equal to one. That's every second stationary point of sine. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, let's see, uh, inflection points. So inflection points happen when the second derivative switches between positive and negative. Um, so it would have to be zero at that point, at the, the inflection point, but I have to check whether it properly switches between positive and negative. So let's see, uh, g double dashed x is gonna be zero. So minus cos of x has to be zero, which means cos of x has to be zero. Um, causes the x-coordinate on this graph, not that x. Uh, so that would be at these places. That's interesting. It's the same places as this, except this is an extra one. Ah, uh, cool. So x is pi on two uh, plus, okay, so this is only pi away. So every multiple of pi from there will do it. So pi times, I won't use k because I've already used it, pi m for m in z. Okay, that's the same as these, right? Just every every pi away from pi on two is this and this and this. So all the places where sine has its turning points are the places where this has its inflection points. That's really cool. I'm very interested to see what the graph looks like, but I've just noticed that I haven't done the last step I need to be inflection points. So I need to do a sine diagram. Um, for G double dashed. So it's got these turning points, not turning points, these places where the second derivative is zero and I pi on two, three pi on two, minus pi on two and so on every second one. And here minus cos of x, in here, cos of x is positive here, minus cos of x is negative there. And then it really is, it is gonna switch between positive and negative. 
Um, luckily, I had that handy cos graph drawn there. So they really are all inflection points. So these are all inflection points. Okay, I really want to have a look at this graph uh, because it looks really interesting. It's got stationary points, but they're all inflection points. Uh, and um, then it's got every other step, there's another inflection point that isn't a stationary point. So I really want to look at this graph. I'm going to switch over to GeoGebra and have a look. All right, let me put this in. G of X is uh, X plus cos of X. Okay, cool. Okay, I can see them. I can see uh, the derivative is zero here because it's flat there. And I can see that it's sort of concave up in this spot and concave down in this spot. So there must be a turning point somewhere in between. Um, let me just draw something on here. Um, put a point on this curve. Um, and let's draw something that's got that slope. So that point's called A by the look of it. So um, y equals, now it has whatever the y coordinate of A is, plus uh, the slope, which would be g dashed whatever the x coordinate of A is, times x minus whatever the x coordinate A is. So that's the slope. Why can I not move this point? So zero there, there's an inflection point. Um, it's concave up here and concave down there, but it's not stationary. And then a stationary one and then an inflection point and then a stationary one. What a fascinating graph. Okay. Well, I have found them all um, and it was a very interesting graph.